say yo, yo, yo. What up guys and welcome back to another Foul Friday. As I promised on yesterday's video, today is the start of Foul Fridays again. I've been hunting my tail off. Oh man, that wind, it is getting it. We got a cold front from H E double L coming on in here. I'm sure if you're from the Midwest, you do too, but today we're gusting at like 16 to 28 mile an hour winds right now. It's great. We got flurries. I don't know if you can see them, but we got the flurry action. Full cloud cover and we have a north system rolling in. But like I said in yesterday's video, I do have a big surprise to show y'all. Something I'm extremely, extremely excited about and proud of. And we will get to that in just a bit. But today's video is about the big question. I get it a lot. A lot of people ask me, Bobby, are sunny days better than cloudy days? Are windy days better than calm days? Vice versa, what's better? And this is my honest two cents on it all. Oh yeah, look at it. Whoo! So right now, the temperature has dropped, I don't know, I'd say about 15 degrees, 20 degrees from this morning. Right now it is right at three o'clock in the afternoon. So, and that cold front is pushing southward across the state. Oh, and with that southbound cold front rolling in from the north, if you were to scout this morning and then hunt the same field that you scouted that you found the birds on this morning tonight, this evening would be an awesome hunt. I can guarantee you. I can promise you it would. So what happens, guys, is weather. Weather, weather, weather has to be our first tool of use. I've stressed wind and cold conditions and those cold fronts rolling in from the north, how I've stressed to you guys how important they are and why they do what they do to birds. What they do is they chop down at birds' vulnerabilities. So that is the main key to, to getting successful hunts is let's scout them and then let's look at the weather. When weather rolls in, what it does, it makes them vulnerable to hunger. When the cold hits, their bodies tell them, hey man, it's freezing. You're going to be roosting and sitting on cold water all night. You need food to build energy to stay warm and survive. So, cold fronts, high wind. High wind reduces the feel of, you know, the wind chill, the temperatures. So, anything mixed, the colder, the bitter, the more harsh the condition, the more vulnerable birds will be and how better they'll react to your spread and calling. It's just science. It's just science, let me tell you. So always remember, weather equals vulnerabilities. If it's sunny, no wind, nice bluebird skies, they're not going to be very easy to intrigue because they're not telling themselves, hey, we need to feed up because we have to survive. Surviving is easy at that point. Warm weather, no harsh conditions that's going to beat on them. They don't have to feed hard. So... This cold front moving in, guys, I'm telling you right now, you need to get out, you need to do your scouting, and you need to take advantage of the cold fronts. If you get on them cold front days right when they hit, or the day after, within the first two days of a cold front hitting, that's when you're rolling off a warm front, say that, that warm front lasted you a week, like myself here, gonna be some good hunting to come. So, my main statement, are sunny days better than cloudy days? If I would say, if I had to choose, the only way you're going to get into the birds is not being a fair weather hunter. Fair weather hunting does not equal birds. Now, sometimes it does. I've had some good, good hunts on sunny days. Don't get me wrong, but I would say the success percentile is going to go way up when the cold rolls in. Their bodies tell them that they have to feed to survive. So just always take that into a big consideration guys. It's a big tool that I use and a lot of outfitters and, and guides use to their advantage. Look guys, we got homes with heaters and everything. When the cold rolls in and the rain and the snow, we're like, heck no, it's cold outside. I ain't gonna go hunting. But the birds, they have to go eat. And that's where we can step in and have good hunts, is getting in front of them birds on them cold fronts. All right, I'm done beating the dead horse here. Oh, so, if I think there's one main tip, one main point to take out of this Foul Friday, because this Foul Friday is not about decoy spreads, how to set them, how to call, nothing like that. The one main thing is to always, 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 always pay attention to the forecast. Always look at it. Get you, I use AccuWeather. I'm not affiliated with AccuWeather, 
but I trust them. They've done me well, and their forecasts are usually spot on. I will always, always look for those weather days where those northern fronts are rolling in. On those days, I'm going to say, hey, on the 28th, that's when your boy's going to be hunting. So it's just something to keep in mind. If you see a cold front rolling in on a Friday and you're only available to hunt on those weekends, you better get your butt out there and do you some hunting that weekend because it should be good. Birds, vulnerabilities, expose those vulnerabilities. I'm going to add one quick thing before I get to the surprise here. But even wind on sunny days helps a lot because maybe they're not as hungry on those sunny days and maybe it's still warm but you have that wind that wind helps them square up and it keeps them interested longer in the decoy spread the high wind makes them square up a lot better they stay aloft a lot longer so it makes for an easier shot that's all i want to really add on the sunny day high wind part but you get what i'm saying but real quick i want to tell you guys the thermal hoodie and those thermal waiter sweats oh boy this cold front don't stand a chance because these bad boys keep me warm. But now, what y'all been waiting for, I gotta show you. I'm so proud of it. Let's go check this out. Oh man, it's really picking up out here. Woo, it's getting cold. This is not me showing off by no means. This is me and myself being proud to finally say that I own my first ever myself. My first decoy trailer look at this girl right here oh oh look at the new whip oh my goodness i found this bad boy it was the right price it's brand stinking new now it's like yep that's the one that's it right there looks so good behind the black dodge oh my goodness as you can tell here oh yeah i have no room left in here all the dive bombs are in here as you can tell they're just stacked in this topper and the topper has really served its purpose and it'll continue to serve its purpose you know on small duck hunts or something where i don't need the trailer but finally i got my own baby let's check her out oh when i'm done filming here i gotta go buy that is so tight she is brand new led lights all the way around oh yeah oh yeah Look at this bad girl here. Oh man, came with spare tire and even a little shelf up here. Might put some ammo or something up there. I don't know exactly what I'm gonna use this for, but what I do need from you guys is help naming this bad boy. I'm so proud of it. It's not like, again, I'm not bragging about getting a nice trailer. I am just proud that I can buy myself my own enclosed trailer finally. The other enclosed trailer, this one is uh, weights and it has all of our decoys and stuff in it But like you guys know I've been running dive bomb decoys and I'm getting more and more and more I, I literally want a 200 dozen spread of my own of dive bomb silhouettes and dive bomb socks and A hundred dozen barely fits in the bed of my truck in the old topper The front portion will probably stack all my dive bombs in here. I get to hang my panel blinds put my lay down blinds in here all my duck floaters, my waders, everything I own can just go in here out of the way so I don't have to keep repacking the topper. Once I put all the dive bombs in that topper, I don't even have any room for my waders or anything. This is just an achievement for me. My hard work finally got me my own trailer. Now it's time to fill this bad boy. This is a 7x14 and I know I'll have enough room for the old quad out back. But that's really going to be nice is I'll be able to haul the quad in here. I think I'm going to buy me a pretty big sled to pull behind the quad in case it's muddy. But isn't she beautiful? I have to get a light bar on the side of this bad boy. I'll tell you what. She's going to look good on the side of that. But please help me name this bad girl. Drop a comment down below. Come up with a funny name. And whoever I pick with the best name, I will send you some ducks gear. It is cold outside, oh my goodness. Oh, so, uh, back inside here, it was way too cold outside. This cold front is moving in, and right now, like I was saying, it's the wind is northwest at 24 mile an hour, 28 degrees, but it feels like five degrees outside. These are the days, like I was saying, these are the days that you could absolutely just get into them. If you found a feed this morning while it was warm and decent, today, tonight, or in the morning, tomorrow, would be an awesome day to hunt those birds that you found. 
But back to the trailer, uh, besides the name, if you guys have a name, drop a comment down below, like I said. But if you have any ideas for the trailer, hey, Bobby, you need to build this. Hey, put this uh, type of tool in your trailer. Hey, Bobby, build a shelf here, a door there. Tell me your guys' ideas. If you guys have enclosed trailers and you've done some slick little idea that just works awesome and that could possibly work for me in my trailer take in consideration it's only a 7x14 I didn't get a 16 or an 18 or 20 footer she's a 14 footer I didn't want to go too big you know but please help me out drop your comments down below I would greatly appreciate the help but guys I hope everyone has had a great holiday little season going on here hope you all have a happy happy new year and if I could say anything to take from this video, I would say anytime you're able to get out and hunt, do it. Get out and hunt. Even if it's sunny, even if there isn't any wind, because I'll tell you what, it's not about the size of the pile at the end of the day. It's about the experience you take home with you. I always stress that, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Do I like killing piles of birds? You betcha. Those are great hunts. But... Some of the best hunts and experiences and memories that I can ever recall were just that. Some of the funniest experiences. Some of the most friendly experiences. Some of the new faces that I've met over the amount of years that I've been doing this. That is the reason why we all do this at the end of the day. Is for the experiences to take home. But please guys, subscribe if you haven't. If you haven't, I don't know what you're doing. You need to. And if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Give your boy a big old thumbs up. But stay tuned, we will have an episode coming up Sunday. Be looking out for that. We will see you guys on the next one. Have a good one, y'all. Peace. <laughs>